solution for everything. Um, so is this, um, so are we done? So is this all we need for regression? No? Okay. Uh, there's, there's still something that's, there's still some things, ways we can improve this. Right, you're, you're shaking your head. Yeah, um, we haven't handled outliers. Outliers, okay, good. Outliers. Great. So one of the problems with least squares is that it's very susceptible to outliers. Um, so say you have data that looks like this, and it looks like it follows some, some linear pattern, um, except there's one data point that's straight that's down here. The least square solution is going to fit something like this, when really the data looks like it should be fit by a line here. So this is, um, so this is the least square solution. It's not going to deal well with these outliers. All right. Um, what's another problem with, with least squares? So I'll I'll, I'll, I'll talk. The, the rest of the lecture will be kind of overview of some of the techniques for handling some of these problems. But, but um, what, what's another problem with these squares? My notes, just want to make sure. <coughs> okay, so What's, what's strange about this expression here? I'm, I, I somehow have to write something weird up here. Like, in, the, this, this shouldn't totally make sense here. I've, I've, I've mapped a model point, which is just here, and I've compared it with this y value here. I've done, I've done something weird. The, the, these, these shouldn't exactly this should exactly make sense. This is a point, this is just a y coordinate. Right? What I've done is I've taken, so the least squares thing, it, it looks and it, it changes just, just the y coordinate here. So this is actually m of p dot y, the y coordinate, and this is p dot, and if I just map, these over, I'm just looking at this, this y coordinate. And I'm just comparing the difference in the y coordinate. Um, what might make more sense instead is if I mapped onto the model, onto the closest point on the model. Why did I move to this point? This is not the closest point on the model. If I want to say, what is the model representation of this point, I said, well, <coughs> I'm going to assume that the x coordinate is correct, and I'm only allowed to move in the y coordinate. Um, but, you know, maybe there's, there's not reason to assume that your x coordinate is always correct. Maybe there's error in your x coordinate, too. You know, if there's data, there's probably error, and I'll ask, if you think there's data in just the y coordinate, but the x coordinate is exact, maybe that's not a fair assumption. So you said, let's map to the closest point and change, allow to change both the x and the y coordinates. Right, so, um, so, so, so another issue is that it only considers um, the vertical distance. So the, I mean, the vertical depends on how you draw it, right? But it's only considering the distance along the y coordinate. So you know, this is an SLA problem. So maybe you're trying to predict a particular value in your data, and the other ones you assume are, are exact. But you know, and, and in that case, least squares is the right thing to do. 
But there are other techniques that say, I want to fit a, line, a line through here that's minimizing the sum of these distances, these, these projections, under the closest point. And so the, there's, there's another solution for that, which is different than least squares. So those are not the same solution. So, so this vertical distance in my measuring error was a modeling choice. Um, so there's, there's another thing weird about this Gauss-Markov theorem, um, and it's maybe not as optimal as you might have thought. This zero expected error is, is, is actually um, not necessarily always the right constraint to take. So the, this is basically saying that you have no bias in your solution, that you don't want to, um, that you, um, so is basically that you don't want to assume there's any, 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 you want to just look at the data and not bias it towards anything outside of what's captured in the data. And so if you've taken um, anything in Bayesian statistics, you know, the, one of the whole points of Bayesian statistics is saying that, you know, when you're looking at data, you know something, you have a prior about it. You have some bias about the data. And if you want to add in that bias, and you think that'll help your prediction, well then least squares is not allowing you to add that bias. Or is not, is not adding in that bias for you. Um, and so, you know, it, it has no bias. Um, so, in, 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 in certain cases, you can actually, um, if, if, you're doing, if, if you're doing a technique where you're, you're drawing data from a distribution and you're looking at kind of a subset of this distribution to build the model and then using the rest of it to check how much error you have, you can actually do better in, in, um, in, in the, um, in the same least squares cost function by adding in some bias into your model. You're not going to have zero expected error anymore, but you're going to have, um, so the expected error is, is going to be larger than zero on any data point you add in, but the overall sum of squared errors is going to be small. So, that, so this is going to be kind of, if, if you have not seen any, um, if you've not seen any Bayesian statistics, this may be kind of confusing. Um, but there's a very simple way you can add in a small amount of bias, and I'll kind of intuitively explain what this means. And you can regularize your solution. And this will allow you to, um, to th this was another way that helps you be more robust and higher than other types, types of notes. Um, and, and in, in fact, the reason I spent the time to write out this matrix uh, way is that you can you can you can still regularize your solution and still use the same technique essentially to solve it. You just need to modify this a little bit. Um, and one fourth fourth point um, is that is that you know although. On, on large dimensional data, you know, this uses these techniques, sorry, this inverse should be out here. Okay, on, the, on large dimensional, on large data in a high dimensional space, all these, these matrix operations are heavily, heavily optimized. Um, and even if your, your data is sparse, you can improve some of these things. But this one step of taking this inverse of this matrix, is, is critical to solving these terms. Um, it it's kind of corresponds with, um, like, this inverse is actually this thing that you're dividing by. Right? So the inverse is allowing you to do it um, a way of dividing. And so th this, is, this is really critical to solving this. And this step is really slow. Um, so, and, and you, for really large data sets, or if it's in, let's say, this streaming model we were talking about, um, last week, then it's really hard to do an inverse in a string. So we're going to talk about other ways how you can approximately solve some of these problems. 
in, even in high dimensions, um, without actually doing the inverse, but finding other ways of solving this. So, so, so getting around the slowness part. Okay. Um, all right, so, so these are the main, I guess, four issues I've identified. I'm going to try and sketch some of the solutions to them from the ones that I'm going to spend less time in the rest of class to more time on. So the first one I'll talk about is a way of dealing with outliers. And of course, one way of dealing with outliers is to use absolute least, at least absolute differences. Um, but the, the, the algorithm for this is kind of, I don't know, I, I'm not a big fan of linear programs because you kind of throw all these constraints in some abstract box and then out pops an answer and that. And I, get to, you know, I, I don't get a lot of intuition for that. There's some cool things you can understand about them in low dimensions, but it, it's, with a lot of constraints, you have a lot of dimensions and I don't know. So, so I, I'm going to talk about a different approach to dealing with that line. So let me... So there's um, a robust um, statistics. Um, we need to define how robust an estimator is. Is the notion of a breakdown point. So we're gonna we're gonna have some data, and we're gonna get some estimator of this data. And what we're gonna do is we're going to um, look at what happens as we take some of this data and say these are outliers. And there's so many outliers, I'm going to take those data points and move them off to infinity, you know, or someplace really far away, right? So um, the breakdown point point is is going to be equal to the um, the fraction of data that can be moved to infinity and and the estimator is not at infinity. Um, so in the case of layer regression, this, so each you have to define this a little bit more specifically, but this this is best illustrated the difference between the mean and the median. Right? So if if I, if I have a set of, um, of of data points, and I take the um, I take the mean of these data points, the mean is going to be something about right here. And but these data points are are pretty reasonable. So if I take one of these points and move it off to say over here or even further over, right? then the mean is going to be moved from the old location here to a new location out here. Right? And it's, if I move this, this outlier point all the way off the board and, and, like, and, and out of the room all the way down by the library, right? this mean is going to be outside the room. But all the other data points are, are inside of here. So the mean has a breakdown point of, uh, uh, um, of about 1 over n.
All right, so, then, so what happens if I take um, if I take the median of these points instead? So actually the median, I guess if I have seven points, is always going to be right on top of this point. Right, so, so if this blue point was, was right here, then the median is this point. If I take this point and I move it off here, or even down to the library, the median's in the same spot, right? Um, so the median has a breakdown uh, point of one half. So in order to make the median go off to infinity to be something crazy, then I have to move one half of the points off to, off to infinity. So if more than half my points are in a reasonable location, then my median is going to be an estimator that's still in a reasonable location. So it can handle up to half the points being outliers. Whereas the mean can only handle up to one, um, it can't even handle one point being a really extreme outlier. And the least squares uh, is doing something like the mean. Um, it's using, I, I took down, I erased all this stuff, but it was using actually this this mean value, this p bar of x, is the mean, and that was very central in all of its calculations. So uh, a, a statistic which is robust is one that has a high breakdown point. So you can have a large fraction of outliers and still, um, and, and, and still compute the statistic um, and it not being affected too much by it. Okay, so we're gonna talk about, so the, the field set estimator was, I think, one of the first um, types of robust statistics people prove for linear regression. So I think the least angle, the or the least absolute difference is is also some sort of uh, um, is also some form of robust estimator. But the Thielsen estimator is is uh, is going to be even simpler to work with. Um, so it's even simpler to calculate. Okay, so, um, so how does this work? So if you're calculating the, the um, some line, um, let me write this back up again. So, so L is going to be AX plus B. Then we have two components. One is this offset and one is the slope. And so the hard part is going to be the slope. The, the offset, we're just going to take the median of values once we found the slope. So, so, so how do we... So how do we do something like the median, but finding the slope? What's, uh, what would make sense here? We're gonna use something, we're gonna use some version of using the median here, but on, on slopes. Does, does anyone have any guess? Um, you could calculate the slope from the origin to each of the points. Okay, um, there's, that, that, that works if the points are, are centered around the origin, it, or it, it may possibly work, right? So if the origin is here, and all your points are, or say all your points are like this, then this is, this is not gonna work. You want the line through here. So you, maybe you can somehow shift them and do something like that, but we're gonna do something different. But that's a good. Uh, uh, but that's a good guess. You want to do something where you look at slopes and you take the median, but not from the origin. What are other options of slopes you could take? Between points. Good. So um, look at all um, pairs of of points. Um, P, I, and P, J, and P. Um, it'll let, um, without loss of generality, P, I, dot, X, less than <coughs> J, dot, X. And look at the slope. Um, S, I, J is going to be equal to, um, Y, um, P, Y, J minus, or see, P, 
dj y minus p i y over p j x um, minus p p i x. Right. So this is by two points, and this is p x, and this is our p i, and this is p j. Then the slope is going to be um, is going to be this line here. But I'm going to, you know, it's going to be shifted. So it, it, it may actually be, be here if the origin is, is down here. So it's, uh, the, s the slope is such that it goes to the origin that's in this place. Right, so, it, so this is the slope. And then I'm going to take, and then let this, um, let S be the, um, the set of all Sij. And then we're going to let A be the median of S. And so this is going to be our estimation of the slope. And then you can also calculate B by saying B equals the median of the set um, yi minus a. So after you found the slope, then basically you know the line, and then you uh, you look at all of the differences from the projection, and you just move this up and down so it's 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 uh, half of our above and half of below. That's basically what this this offset is doing. Um, so this is the so this is. Um, this, so this line described by this B and B is the Thielsen estimate, and that's it. And so you can show that the breakdown point um, <coughs> that point is going to be zero point. Um, what is it? Two nine three. I think this is like one minus square root two or or something. So, but it's, it, it, basically that means you can have up to, say, 29% of your points can be outliers, and this will still be okay. And it's also, in, in one dimension, this is fairly easy to calculate. The median of a set you can do in, in linear time. Um, and so you just, but you need to calculate these n squared of these, these slopes. So you can do this in n squared time. So it's not near linear, but you can do it in, um, so you can do it naively in, in, um, in n squared time. Um, I think there are algorithms to improve it. Um, so, so this Thielsen estimator was, I think, the, the first thing that people looked at. There's a, a simple extension to this um, by Siegel. that said, well, this one requires a Z squared step, and it only has a 29% breakdown point. I want to get up to, you know, the, this one half breakdown point. This is as good as you can do. Um, if you have, your breakdown point can't be higher than one half, because then you could have more than, more than half your points are all off at the library, but they're all together at the library, then you should have your estimator over there instead. Right, so, so you can't do better than one half. So can we get a linear estimator that has a breakdown point of one half? And, um, and so, uh, uh, so Siegel looked at this and said, yeah, there's something even simpler we can do. Instead of looking at all, of the, all pairs of these n squared or say slopes, what we're going to look at is for each point, we want to estimate its slope. Right, so we're going to do for a point Pi, we're going to get a slope estimate, which is going to be the median of, of all Sij, um, you know, for, um, for Pj and, and P, I and Pi. Right, so for each, each individual point, so if I take one point here, I'm, I'm then going to look at all of its all of its possible slopes. 
and I do the same thing where I sort them so the smaller x coordinate comes first and so forth. And I look at all these slopes and I take the median uh, slope of, of all these lines. And this is my estimator for SI. And then I'm going to let S prime is going to be these sets of, of SI um, given that PI is in P. I'm going to get N of these slopes and then my A is, is, is going to be the median of S prime. And then B I would calculate the same way. So I do this in two steps. I, I, I do repeated medians. For each point, I take the median of its slopes, and then for each of those, and then I take the median of all these, and this is um, my estimates of the slope. And then I'll also I do it the same way. And if you do this, then the breakdown point is going to be equal to um, one half. So I'm going to get this optimal one half breakdown point. And again, you can do this pretty easily in n squared time. You can actually get it to about uh, to about n log n. It's a little bit more complicated, but you can um, you, you can then also implement this in a way that's efficient. So this one is going to be um, in the sense of this breakdown point is going to be robust to outliers, and you can calculate in basically uh, near linear time as well. So this is probably probably a completely different way of doing linear regression, but, it, uh, um, um, but it's, it's going to be much more robust outliers. There are generalizations of this to higher dimensions, but they, these algorithms are slower. Um, so um, so it's, it's harder to solve for these exactly in higher dimensions. So these, these uh, robust estimator versions where, where you're looking generalizations of the median don't work as well for higher dimensions. So I won't talk about these specifically. Um, do you have any questions on any of these algorithms? How they really work? Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to use this, this space again. So. Let's see, so, so, um, so who, who's heard of um, Tikhonov regularization or um, rigid regression? Okay, so those are the same thing, and they're uh, they're a tweak on, you know, these squares to add some bias into this thing. So you're gonna you're not gonna satisfy the conditions of the Gauss Markov theorem and you can actually in in some cases do better and handle and stand up better to nodes. And this is something that will generalize to higher dimensions. And so we'll talk about um, after spring break we'll talk about a technique to, to solve for this. So instead of so, um, so the least squares optimality or the, the least squares cost function of um, of, of a point set was going to be um, minus, um, what is it, minus a, let me just say, m of, of t squared. Right, so, the, so this was, was the least squares cost function. And so what we're going to look at instead is the is the least squares of p with, with an alpha parameter, and this is going to be our, our um, regularization parameter, and it's going to be this same part here. Um, but you're also going to have, have another term And so I'm going to assume that these things have been um, centered, so the y, the y coordinates, so I don't have to worry about the shift parameter. 
Um, so assume that P of Y equals zero. This means I don't have to worry about this B, this extra B term. And so then this is going to be A um, times P of X squared plus A, um, what's it going to be? Plus S times A squared. So my cost function now is going to have this extra parameter S times the slope squared. Okay, so what is um, so what does this mean? Um, so if I have a point set and it's centered at the origin, and so the least squares fit maybe something like this. Assume it went through the origin. Um, so the larger my slope the more vertical the line is, the, the, the higher the cost. So I'm going to want a flatter line here. So this may be the, the squares, and then the solution here is going to be something like this, where the slope is going to be lower. Um, um, so why would I want to do this? Why would I want to bias my line to have a smaller slope? So who's heard of um, regression to the mean? Um, no one else has heard of regression to the mean. So there's this phenomenon where if you look at like these, these people predicting the stock market, um, what's going to happen is, is, is every year there's going to be some company which is going to have, you know, is, is going to do the best in the stock market. And if you look at over the past 10 years, which companies, you know, there are certain companies that will have made more than the average for 10 years in a row. Okay, and if you look at these companies and you look at their performance relative to the average of all these, these stock index indexes in the 11th year um, it's usually it's usually right on the average there's there's what what happens is that if people are doing well for, for a period of time that's usually not a lot of indication that they're going to do there's usually not necessarily that much indication that they're going to do better in the future right the, the, um, that if people who tend to have, have have performed, you know, very high, you know, tend not to do as well in the future. That the if you look at just the maximum values of something, you know, those tend to be the people who did well earlier. Someone else who might do better if they have variance will tend to do better later on. And so expecting that the the, the really top people. Well, keep doing top. You shouldn't keep your hopes up so high. They're somehow going to regress towards the mean, and, and so this is this notion of um, regression towards the mean. Um, and so it's it's very common in in statistics. So like um, if you if you look at certain parameters of um, say sports teams, where there, there's if you look at uh, um, like football teams and you see teams that won games, their record in when there was, the, the difference of points was only, um, like football teams, American football, where the difference in the score was less than three. Usually these games are distributed, who wins and who, who loses is, is random. If the, the variance is very high, if the difference is very high, then usually the better team won. If the difference is low, it may come down to a last second score, which is almost, you know, is, is almost random. So if a team does really well on these, close games in one year, you would probably expect them to do um, about average the next year, and so you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't um, reflect their score so much. So this is this notion, which if you look at actual data, this actually happens a lot. So th th this, in the Bayesian statistics point of view, this is a saying that the mean 
is what you expect data to look like. And the, and, the, um, and so you're going to bias towards the mean. Okay, so now we're talking about linear regression instead of, you know, just the mean. So how do we do this? Well, the linear regression, remember, we're talking about this vertical error. So the vertical error is all in this y-coordinate. And we assume that the y-coordinate was, was centered to zero. If not, we'll first do this with our data. So then the mean is going to be that all the points expect to be about zero. That's our bias ahead of time. And so uh, when we do regression to the means, we say we expect the points which are far away to actually end up being closer to zero. We're expecting there not to be a lot of correlation. The higher the correlation, the higher the slope of this. So if there's not a lot of correlation, it should be essentially flat. Um, so, so this is biasing towards having a smaller slope because that's biasing towards not having these extreme values. Remember, because we're only looking at the difference in the y coordinate, an outlier, we assume the x coordinate is exact. So any notion of an outlier has to be really high or really low. So then having, we don't want the slope to be pulled too far towards these outlier points. So it's again better to move it back towards being a smaller slope. So this, so this is the rationale um, behind doing this. So, you know, there's a lot of part of um, statistics which you can back up with real data, and there's some math behind it, but there's these kind of, you kind of have to kind of uh, give a lot of you know, explanation and, you know, of, of why you're doing these things, but I'm telling you this because it, it actually, it actually works in practice. And, and there's some, um, there's a cool talk on compressed sensing earlier today. I don't know if anyone saw it, but you're able to reconstruct these signals using tricks like this. Um, okay, so, so once you have this formulation, um, the cool thing is, is that this is equivalent